An ECG, also called an EKG, is a graph that records the electrical current as it passes through your heart. So before we can get into what these waves actually mean, we need to review some basic terminology. So what are depolarization and repolarization and how do they relate to muscle contraction? Depolarization is a wave of electricity that triggers contraction while repolarization is a wave of electrical reset and it is necessary for a new wave of depolarization to occur. What are systole and diastole and how do they relate to muscle contraction? So when we're talking about the heart, systole is contraction, diastole is relaxation. You also need to know the very basics of the cardiac cycle. So your heart has four chambers. You have on the top, two atria. On the bottom, two ventricles. Each of those chambers has muscular walls that are going to contract and propel the blood forward. What is the order that the chambers of the heart contract in? So the blood is flowing in through the atria, and most of that blood is just going to passively flow down into the ventricles, and the ventricles are actually what is going to pump the blood up and out of the heart. But right before the ventricles contract, the atria contract to kind of squeeze that last little bit of blood into the ventricles so that they're extra juicy full when they pump. So the fact that they're extra full maximizes the efficiency of the contraction. So when your heart beats, it's both atria, both ventricles. So when we're looking at the ECG, this first little wave we're seeing here is the P wave, and that is atrial depolarization. So that is the wave of electricity that is going to make the atria contract. This next part is the QRS complex. And that is ventricular depolarization, which is going to make the ventricles contract. And then the last wave is the T wave. Notice it's just alphabetical, P, Q, R, S, T. And that little T wave is ventricular repolarization, so the wave of electrical reset. So the first thing students generally notice is, okay, we have our ventricular repolarization. Where is the atrial repolarization? So that is happening at the same time as ventricular depolarization. Uh, you know, if this was a multiple choice test and you had to pick one of them happening at the time of the QRS, you would pick ventricular depolarization because that is of a greater magnitude. Another thing students generally ask is, okay, like depolarization, repolarization. Typically when we see these on a graph, their direction is opposite, as you would expect, because the words are opposite. The reason they're not opposite has to do with the way the electrodes are set up and how the waves of electricity are moving. It's not really worth trying to figure out why they are the same. Just take note that in this instance, repolarization and depolarization are moving in the same direction, and just know it has to do with how they're taking the measurement. So we can line this graph up to the cardiac cycle. Our atria will be relaxing, and then partway through the P wave, the depolarization is going to trigger that atrial contraction, and then they're going to repolarize and go back into relaxing. The ventricles the ventricles are going to be relaxing until that QRS complex, the ventricular depolarization, then they are going to go into contraction, and by the end of the T wave, they will be back into relaxing. 
So here's atria contract, immediately followed by the ventricles contracting. All right, so that was the very, very basics. But also in a clinical setting, you might hear reference made to segments and intervals. So segments are part of the ECG that are in between waves. Intervals always include at least one wave. So think interval I for includes a wave. So for example, the PR interval includes a wave and that is the P wave. So it is the start of atrial depolarization to the start of ventricular depolarization. The QT interval includes both the QRS complex and the T wave, so it's capturing the entire cycle of ventricular depolarization and repolarization. And then the ST segment. Segments do not include waves, so it is between the S and the T. So that's the time that the entire myocardium is depolarized because it starts at the end of when it finished depolarizing and it ends before it starts to repolarize. So these different intervals and segments can indicate different disease processes are occurring. A prolonged PR interval could indicate a first degree heart block and that's an issue of conduction. The electrical signal between the atria and the ventricles is getting slowed down. If the QT interval is too long, basically the time between depolarization and repolarization is taking too long and that can cause things to become out of sync and it can kind of escalate into an arrhythmia, potentially total cardiac arrest. And an elevated ST segment, meaning like this space here is higher than it should be, that can indicate that a person is having a heart attack. That's a sign that the myocardium is being damaged. So to fully understand why those findings on an ECG are related to those pathologies, you need to have a good understanding of these other things, which I don't want to explain in great detail here. I just want to give you a bit of a preview so that as you go forward and you continue to learn more and more details, you understand how these things are all going to fit together.